Hi guys, Di here. How's your weekend going? It's actually stopped raining here today, which is pretty cool. Okay, today. Today we are making the box part of the book. So the treasure box inside the cover. Just get rid of that. So you will need two pieces of chipboard that are just a tad under nine inches by one and a half inches. So you need two pieces of that. You will need two pieces that are just a tad under six inches by one and a half inches. You will need um, some black cardstock. Um, so just normal chipboard for the chipboard which I've painted with gesso oh, and I'll show you that in a minute. You will need some chipboard, um, black cardstock. So I've just cut um, a couple of A4 sheets into one and a half inch strips. Um, I've scored them down the middle and folded them in half and they will become our hinges to build the box with so you'll need a few of those I'm not sure how many yet and you'll also need one thinner piece which is one inch scored down the middle and this will be the corners to stabilize the outside of the box okay so we've got that I'll just find my piece of chipboard. Okay, so for the chipboard itself, if you get organised again, you will need a piece of paper towel, kitchen towel from the kitchen. Um, I bought this one um, because it has the ridges. I don't know if you can see that. It has the ridges in it. Um, which when you paint it up it actually looks like wood so as you can see so I have just glued it on with some PVA glue coating down not too much Get rid of that. Just lay it on there okay and cut the excess off So you're just going to let that dry, or dry it with a heat gun and then you are going to uh, paint it with black gesso, just normal black gesso, paint both sides inside and out. Okay, so I've painted these two, those ones are finished and then once you gesso, once you dry your gesso off. Grab some Warumba, a little bit of brown, and I've got a little bit of marine blue. Now, marine blue is just basically dark blue with some um, Payne's grey mixed in it. So, I just painted.
goodness me. So I just painted the whole thing roughly with the blue. Just want to put a couple of little dots of the brown. So this is just a brown earth Josonia brand. And then a couple of dots of the raw umber. Just work it in. Let some of that blue shine through. <clears throat> dry that off Just a another little bit randomly of the raw umber. That's it. That's our wood. We're going to just give it a little light brush with some white gesso in a minute, which I'll show you. Just 
got a bit of white gesso here. You want to get most of it off your finger and just rub it in places. You don't want it everywhere. much like that just get your wet brush and take it off so yep And that's it. That is our sides of our wooden box. Just going to get a little bit more raw umber. So that gives you um, a little bit of a bark type look to it with all the different tones. Alrighty, that'll do just fine. Just give that a dry. So that's our box and our hinges. Now the other thing that I did was we have these filigree things, decorations, ornamental decoration type things. Um, and what I've done is I've used them as a hinge so I have um, I have inked them up on one side to make them look rusty and 
grungy. And I'll do one with you now so that you can see how it's done. And I've got two magnets and this is going to be the closure on our box lid. So these will get um, bent in half. And they will get attached to the box lid under here. And a magnet will attach it to the side of the box here. But we'll show you how to do that now. So. Those two bent. So what I've done is I've got some alcohol ink in brown and orange and I've just got some other inks so patinas these ones are for metal and this one's called um, rust and this one's called verdigris and basically I have just mixed them up until I got the desired effect that I need so I think I put some brown down tatty old brush don't ever throw your tatty old brushes out because they're good for this sort of thing this has got yep this side so a couple of drops of brown move it around a bit some orange Some of this third degree down. This stuff you have to mop up with a piece of paper. This one is blocked. So just Muddy it up. We don't want bright colours. Mop it up. And a bit more brown. And that's it. Done. Easy peasy. We have a gnarly rusty old piece of hinge now. Just give that a bit of a dry. Just attach my magnet so I don't lose them. And put my little hinges over there. Ouch, hot. Okay, construction time. 
So to put it together, I am going to use a bit of the paper tape that we used on the cover. Just to get it to hold together. So piece on there. This is actually going to stick to the bottom of our album. So I'll just get the tape on first. So with the hinges, they are going to go on the inside of these to hold them together. And we just need to get our book over here. So the treasure box is going to go on so your lock is like this and your smaller piece is on the bottom side of it. Large piece, smaller piece. So with a three inch piece to the right, this is the base of our box. We need to paint it with the black gesso. Or you can put some um, designer paper down if you've got some wood looking stuff um, but I'm just going to paint it black because I'm going to put glue stuff to the bottom of it anyway later so let's just give this a coat So now I'm trying to get this video done today because I've got my granddaughter and she's four and she loves to help and I don't want her to help with this one. I know that sounds mean but usually I have her propped up beside me and she makes whatever I'm making but this one's a little bit messy for a four-year-old when I'm living in a bus and I don't have a proper bathroom with a bath to throw her in just a shower and I know that if I let her in my white cover will no longer be white. Okay, so one coat is enough because, as I said, we're going to be gluing treasures in there. Make it better dry.
Um, so with the hinges, um, you're just going to put some double-sided tape. Now I use the red tape. I don't like any other double-sided tape. But this is just to give it to hold because we'll be trying to hold bits and pieces together all the time. So I use a bit of this tape and some glue just for that initial quick grab. This is called um, red line tape or heat resistant tape. Um, yeah, you can get it at most craft stores online, in store. down a bit make some room I will need that no I will need those I don't need that So, what we're going to do is build our box now. So you want to bring it up um, just about an eighth of an inch before the crease. Because you don't want it to get in the way of your clothing. So you want about a quarter, yeah, about a quarter of an inch gap between the upright um, latch and the box inside. Okay. Alrighty. Lost them. Here they are. And then you want to do the end. We made them um, probably an eighth of an inch shorter than the base, which is nine by six. So um, make them about an eighth of an inch shorter so that it will fit together, jutting up against each other without going over. Alrighty. So you want this one to sit inside of here. This one, I'm going to have to cut a bit off. I'll just use the Nico to colour that bit in. is all in my head so I've never actually made this before so there will be little adjustments to make to get it to fit together and that's good
Yep. Alrighty. So that's our basic box fold. So this is where we use our hinges. So they are one and a half inches. So we've got to cut one and a half inches. Probably just a fraction under. off the backing of your double-sided tape and add a bit of glue. I'll show you in a minute why I use the red line tape. Put it together and push it in. There you go. So that will hold the inside together while we do our box, and then we'll put another hinge on the outside. On the outside of the box, on the corners, just to give it some stability.